You remember the first time you heard the phrase, you are what you eat, and then you were like, heck the frick yeah, grandma, I'm gonna be a chicken nugget then. But now as an adult, you're like, we're doing it anyway. Well, when I was in college, there was this girl who did exactly that. We called her Carrot Girl because every day at lunchtime, she came out with this fat stack of carrots and that's all she ate, which is kind of mean now in retrospect, actually. And look, we all change our eating habits when we get to college, but this girl ate so many carrots that her skin literally started turning orange. And honestly, I kind of forgot about Carrot Girl until a few days ago, because just like, dude, weirder stuff happens in the world in 2018. But then John Green posted a video over on the Vlogbrothers channel about tomatoes, and he said that like eating too many of them can turn your skin orange, and then the light bulb went off, and I was like, oh, Oh yeah, Carrot Girl. She ate like five tons of carrots over the course of her college career, so how many tomatoes would it take? But more importantly, how do you go from eating orange and red veggies to actually having orange tinted skin? That's what I want to know. Right, so for your skin to actually start turning orange or to get carotenosis, you're going to need a few things. The first is an increased intake of carotenoids. I'll explain. Plants have pigment in them that make them a certain color. Chlorophyll is green, beta carotene in carrots is orange, and tomatoes have a lot of lycopene, which turns them red. If lycopene sounds familiar, it's because recently there was this paper published that linked an increased lycopene consumption with a reduced rate of prostate cancer. So every man around the world was like, all right, heck yeah, it's pizza time. Because, you know, tomato sauce and I'll leave. Lycopene and carotene aren't identical, but they are super similar chemically, which is why we can talk about them together. They're both carotenoids, pigments that dissolve in fat and are broken down into vitamin A. As far as increased intake, we're talking about 20 milligrams of carotenoids every day, give or take, for that orange to start showing up. That would be about one cup of tomato juice, 12 ounces of V8, or eight tablespoons of ketchup if that's what you're into. Here are a couple of the other common foods that contain lycopene and how many servings it would take to get to that 20 milligrams. And again, that's a ballpark number. If you notice, the processed tomato foods like sauce and paste have more available lycopene than raw tomatoes. And that's because the processing actually makes lycopene more available for your body to use. But this doesn't happen in just one day. We're talking four to seven weeks minimum of everyday consumption before any orange is noticeable, and that's if you're already pale skinned. But going hard on tomato juice for a couple weeks still isn't enough. Your body needs something keeping it from converting carotenoids into retinol, which you probably know as vitamin A. Like if you were to chug a V8 right now, your body would take that carotene and lycopene and break it down into vitamin A. Once it's made enough to meet your body's needs, it stops converting those carotenoids into vitamin A and poops out the excess, since you can actually overdose on pure vitamin A. But if your body can't split those carotenoids into vitamin A for whatever reason, then you'll hang on to more of them. For example, you could have a mutation in this enzyme that converts carotenoids into vitamin A, so not getting broken down properly and they build up. To be fair, that's a super rare occurrence. So for your skin to turn orange, you need increased consumption and a reduced ability to break the carotenoids down. The last thing you need for carotenosis is an increase in blood serum lipids, these fatty molecules that float around in your blood. Remember, carotenoids are fat soluble. They dissolve in fat, not water. So by having increased serum lipids, you're giving those carotenoids a home. And with increased blood lipids, you can start turning orange at a lower level of carotenoid consumption than other people. Easiest way to do that is to have some kind of disease that pushes lipids into your blood, like diabetes or hypothyroidism, which has got to be a bummer for diabetics. The doctors tell them to eat all of these red and orange fruits and veggies to manage their diabetes, and now, boom, they're orange. One thing I found interesting was that people with anorexia nervosa, an eating disorder, have a tendency to have high blood lipids, so you might see carotenosis in them as well. Okay, so up until now, we've been talking about things that are happening under your skin. The pigment that's been floating around in your blood is actually attracted to a layer of your skin called the stratum corneum, which has a higher fat content and an affinity for carotenoids. That discoloration is extra noticeable in the areas where the stratum corneum builds up, like the thick skin of your hands, your feet, and in that fold under your nose and above your upper lip. The good news is that carotenosis is super easy to deal with. You just stop eating those carotenoid heavy foods and your skin goes back to normal on its own. That's it for me. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video down below, and check out this video that, it'll, I don't know, it's, it'll be a good one. I really hope anyway. So until next time, have fun, be good. I'll see you next week. Heck the frick yeah. All right, let's see what, what else we can go with.